We're back, and on the line with us is our is is my buddy Dean Obadala, the host of the Dean Obadala Show. Our buddy, uh, he's uh, weekday Sirius XM Progress uh, Channel six to nine p.m. Eastern Time as Channel one twenty seven. He's also a columnist with the Daily Beast, and uh, Dean of Radio is his uh, website dot com, Dean of Radio dot com, and of course Dean Obadala, O B E I D A. L-L-A-H is his Twitter handle. Dean, welcome back to the program. I understand you have uh, uh, family on the West Bank in Israel. It's, uh, uh, it's, of course, Gaza that's under attack right now, but the West right. Bank has been under kind of slow, continuous attack for decades, it seems. Um, uh, your thoughts on what's going on right now? Sure. Thanks for having me on, Tom. I appreciate it. The, you know, I just wrote about it for CNN. The, I mean, what's going on now is heartbreaking. There, there's no winners in this battle between Hamas uh, and Israel. There's just pain and suffering. Unequal, very much so, but still pain and suffering. I mean, you have, as of now, 10 Israelis have been killed, including a five-year-old boy. Um, the Palestinian side, over 200 are dead now, including nearly 60 children and about 40 women who have been killed. So the... It's like a movie, it seems, for people, I'm sure, like Groundhog Day, like it keeps coming back. In reality, the last time you had a battle this fierce was seven years ago. But what happens in between these battles that get the headlines are the continuation of the Israeli occupation of, for example, my family in the West Bank, which they have limited freedom of movement. They, the checkpoints can be open or closed. If you're a Palestinian living in East Jerusalem, that you can be evicted from your home, which they're trying to do right now in this area called Sheikh Jarrah, where they've lived there for generations, but Israeli settlers will go to the court and say, well, we have priority. We're Jewish. They're not. And we're citizens because we're Jewish. They're not citizens. They're, they're Arab Christians or Muslims. And the courts side with them and take their land. And that, that sort of was a backdrop to this fight we're having now. It started from there, this immediate time. But, you know, people always go, oh, they've been fighting for thousands of years. Not in reality, no. Uh, they've been, the struggle began in 1948 with the creation of Israel. And then you had the Palestinians dispossessed from their land. And it, it's really continued from there. Till now, it's just taken on. I think the difference is there are more Democrats who are outspoken about Palestinian humanity, and that's all I want as a Palestinian American is people to recognize our humanity, and then from there, perhaps we can press our government to press the parties for a, a really a just settlement that views the Palestinian Christians and Muslims as being worthy of humanity, which often on the right and even some on the left in the past, to be blunt, have not seen that about Palestinians. So. That was the point of my article, and that's where I'm trying to get people to. It's not litigating what's going on between now Hamas and Israel. This, I hope, will end today, if it will not in the next day or two. But from there, you know, this fades from the headlines, and America goes back to its business, and the world goes back to their business. And once again, the Palestinians are forgotten. But the Netanyahu administration does not forget what their goals are, which is expanding settlements and making a Palestinian state impossible. Yeah. Uh, you know, the—, the um uh, Israeli argument or the argument that's being made in Israel for evicting Palestinians from that part of East Jerusalem is that, mm -hmm. well, that was 900 years ago. That was Jewish territory. Um, I mean, both, both sides making these kind of weird claims, not weird claims, you know, mm -hmm. historic claims. Um, how do, uh, you're, you're much more of a scholar of this than I am, and, and I mean, I've, I've, I've lived through it more than that. Yeah, my dad, exactly. You know, I grew up listening to stories about it, and I've been there. Yeah, and and, so I'm and not just a scholar, but I've lived it. Yeah, yeah. So, and and you know, I've been to, to Israel a number of times, but um, uh, nothing nothing at the level of understanding that you have. What what would be your suggestion if you were, you know, emperor of the world? Um, uh, what how, how does this resolve itself? And, and particularly, the world, I, I mean, both we got the West Bank wanted. and Gaza. You know, I mean, there's, there's right. two separate things right. here that I the, realize. I remember really. the world. I did work on a lot of different things. You know, in fact, having maybe a four-hour day radio show. But if I were to focus a little bit on the Middle East here, as emperor of the world, the solution now is very. It is difficult to see what a solution would look like. Now, I've been a long advocate of two-state solution. The, the number of settlements built, hundreds of thousands in the West Bank make a contiguous Palestinian state impossible there. Gaza and the West Bank don't connect. People don't know this. They're not connected. There's been different ideas in the past. Maybe you connect it with something, uh, you know, a monorail system, something along those lines. But we're not even at that point. You've got Netanyahu who, who ran 
beginning in 2015 saying, although he was prime minister before that, beginning 2015 and repeating it, saying there will not be a Palestinian state on my watch, he's prime minister. So discussing what the contours of a Palestinian state might be are meaningless because there's no partner for Palestine on the other side. You've got Netanyahu who only talks about annexing wide swaths of the West Bank. And one of the few things the Trump administration did in not giving carte blanche to Netanyahu was saying no to that because they understood how bad that would be. And that would make it impossible for even having the charade of talking about two-state solution. It would end that once and for all. So to me, I don't want to see peace. I'm not sure if it's two states. I don't know if it's one state. I don't know if it's a federation, an EU set up type of thing. Whatever it would be that would be lasting and a just peace that would respect the self-determination of the Palestinians and the self-determination and aspirations and security of Israelis. What I see so often in American politics, and Bernie Sanders changed it, was just people saying, what about the Israeli security and safety of their people? Without adding, we should be concerned equally with the Palestinian safety and security. And, and that's the point of my article now. I mean, it's 2021. I mean, we're long past this. This is we must be talking about a real solution where you respect and recognize Palestinian self-determination for the Christians and Muslims who live there. They live, my family's, you know, if you're over 50, you're in, in the West Bank, you're born into an occupation run by the Israelis, you live your whole life, and if things don't change, you die under occupation, not knowing freedom, not having personal self-determination. Forget sovereign personal self-determination because you don't know when a checkpoint's going to be open and not, where you can go and your freedom to travel is limited and it affects your freedoms to for jobs and health care everything's impacted there and we just don't see the story of it here in america there is um, at least one political party in israel that explicitly just basically wants to expel all mm -hmm. non-jews from israel uh yeah. and, and yeah and and uh netanyahu has made you know uh, mm -hmm. alliance w with this party and these and these politicians to what mm -hmm. extent do you think that um the, the, the first you know first you had the palestinian response to to the appropriation of lands in the area mm -hmm. around east jerusalem and then it just this just kind of metastasized all the way to gaza yeah. and now we've got this explosion going on in our face i mean this i'm talking about just in the last few weeks right. um to what extent do you think does it seem to you that uh, this is benjamin netanyahu trying to stay out of prison and get another another <laughs> term as prime minister well, there are certainly people who say that, including liberal Israelis and Arabs living in, in Israel, that they think this is somehow Netanyahu is gleeful about this because now there are people rallying around him. Because after the last election, his coalition, nor the other side, it was against him, had enough seats to, to become prime minister because you have to have 61 seats in the Knesset. Right. And he couldn't form that coalition. So now you have the other side, this guy, man, a man named Yair Lapid who had a chance to form his coalition. So this happens in the middle of it. But you make a great point, though, about that group called Jewish Power. That's their name in English. It's like white power. They are a Jewish supremacist group, very anti-LGBT, horribly anti-women. They want to expel Arabs from their land. They're, the leader of the group, Ben Gavir, one of his heroes, a man named Barack Goldstein, Barack Goldstein, who slaughtered over 20 Palestinians in Hebron at a mosque. And he loves that guy. He's dressed up as him in Purim, which is a Jewish holiday. That's how much he loves, and he puts a picture up. Netanyahu's, that's his partner. That's his partner that he ran with. This is unreal. So if Netanyahu becomes prime minister again, and that man is in the coalition, which he will be in his party called Jewish Power is in it, I think Americans might finally ask questions about, does our aid go to support a government like that, with that kind of composition, that kind of vileness? In it? I mean, Netanyahu's a racist, but at least he gave lip service to Palestinian rights, and at times was fair, at times, to Israeli Arabs. This guy, his coalition partner, no, not at all. So it really is like Trump emboldening the worst in America with good people on both sides and stand back and stand by for the Proud Boys. That's what this Jewish power group is like. And now Netanyahu is not just emboldening them, he's welcoming them. They're part of his governing coalition if he prime minister again yeah it's it's amazing stuff um dino dean obadala on sirius xm every night uh, weekdays 6 to 9 p.m eastern time sirius xm progress channel 127 uh, deanofradio.com is his website dean obadala on twitter dean thanks a lot for dropping by